Argentina, right? The Argentinian currency gets weaker suddenly, then you get less money profits in your own currency. Okay? Or you're exporting to Argentina, or you invested in stocks in Argentina. In that case, you make a loss. Opportunity, you're importing from Argentina, the Argentinian goods are cheaper. You can do FDI in Argentina, it's easier to buy land than pay the salaries. So let's continue then today. So just finish this part. So this is the cost of holding a peg. So if the market forces push a peg currency above its peg, the currency becomes too strong or overvalued. Uh, this is the case in China, right? Let's say. The markets are buying the currency, then the government involves, the government intervenes, they sell their currency, okay? and they reduce the interest rate. The problem is, in China, if the government sells its currency a lot, then we have a lot more currency, Chinese currency in the economy. Can you understand that idea? People want to buy the Chinese currency, so it's making the currency stronger. So what does the central bank have to do? If everybody wants to buy their currency, what do they need to do? To sell their currency, right? The opposite, to keep things in balance. So as they sell their currency, they're putting more currency, Chinese currency, into the economy. Okay? So what's going to happen to prices? Go up, right? So what's inflation in China at the moment? Inflation is higher than Korea, maybe it's 8%, something like that, right? But the Chinese government tries to control inflation in another way. They stop the banks from making loans, because the Chinese government controls the banks, right? So they do other things, like they make rules like one person can only buy two properties to stop the house price from going up, okay? So they try to control inflation with the regulation. Because they have a centrally planned economy, China is not really a democracy, right? They can do those kind of regulations. But uh, we can have inflationary pressure, okay? On the other hand, 
we also lower the interest rate, it's also going to stimulate more investment and economic activity, which also leads to inflation. So this is a cost of, of the Chinese government holding, the, managing their currency, right? They're going, they have some inflation issue. I don't know if you heard, but the house price is very high, for example, in China. It's very hard for people to afford houses. Uh, the next one is the other side. If, like in the case of the UK or Argentina, the market force is pushing the currency below its peg, they're selling the currency, then the government has to buy their currency on the foreign exchange market. Okay? So George Soros is selling the British pound. What is the British Central Bank doing? Buying. Okay, the speculators were selling the Russian ruble. What was the Russian central bank doing? Buying the Russian ruble. Okay? So the government buys on the foreign exchange market and raise their interest rate. What's the problem? Does the government want to give up its hard currency? Okay? So the government has to, in order to buy their currency, they need to give up their dollars, their euros, their yen. Okay? They could use this for buying oil or paying debts, but instead they're using it to keep their currency at the same level. Also, raising domestic interest rates makes the economic activity lower and the unemployment goes up. So in England, they raised the interest rate to 15%. The unemployment rate was at 15%. Okay? Uh, these days, I'm quite surprised in Greece and Spain because they have unemployment rates of 25%, but the people are not doing much demonstrations. Because in the UK, when they had, in 1992, they had an unemployment rate getting to 15%, people was on the street get, having a big demonstrations, okay? pressurizing the government to leave the peg. Okay? So the government should leave the peg, and uh, they should uh, depreciate their currency, and then that will help to s a little bit to solve the unemployment problem. Okay, so maybe the people in the UK understand better than the people in Greece or Spain about that kind of thing. Maybe that's why they were demonstrating, and the people in Greece and Spain are not demonstrating that much, or maybe. People these days don't demonstrate as much as they did 15 or 20 years ago. Right? They have computer games instead. They can play the computer game at home. Why would they go out and demonstrate? Right? On the street. So anyway, if the government raises the interest rate and does that kind of thing, they can get some problem. People will be demonstrating. Companies will be having a bad situation. So this is the problem of holding the peg in both cases. Okay? It's not perfect. So this is just an extra note, but you can check this link if you want. This is about the Federal Reserve in the US. So central banks provide information about when do they when do they intervene in the market. Okay, so this is the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Okay? And they explain about what they do in the foreign exchange markets, so you can check that in your, in your own time if you like. So then I said in the last class that we would read, look at this article today. So if you read some of this at home, it would be a help. So just we are going to learn about reading these kind of articles. It's one of the objectives of this course. Hopefully it will help us to read Articles. This is from the Economist magazine, okay. and it's about currencies. It says, the weak shall inherit the earth. Where did they get this quote from? The Bible. In the Bible it says, the meek shall inherit the earth. Right? Meek means people who is humble or so on. They changed it slightly. They said, the weak. What do you think this is about? The weak shall inherit. The weak shall get the earth. The weak will win the earth. What does that? We're talking about currencies. Are they saying that a weak currency would be a good thing or a bad thing? Hmm? 
Good, right? You will inherit the earth. It means you will. Do you want to you, are you going to inherit something from your grandmother? If they pass away? Or your parents? Do you understand the inheritance? Get money from your parents when they pass away, right? So the weak will get the earth. So you can see a heading here, new government priorities and an enthusiasm for unconventional monetary policy are changing the way the currency market works. So you guys will have to do a kind of report right for the end of the course. So when we're doing a report in English or a presentation, we should have one sentence called a thesis statement which sums up what we want to communicate. Okay? That is kind of the first sentence, makes it clearer. So this article is summing up in one sentence what it wants to communicate at the start. Okay? It's a headline. So the new government priorities, do you understand priority? What's another word for priority? Important thing, why? So new important things for governments and enthusiasm for unconventional. Unconventional means not normal. For monetary policy, instead of saying normal or not normal, they say conventional or unconventional. Okay. So sometimes they use some words always together. Monetary policy, conventional, unconventional. So they are changing the way the currency market works. Okay, so we can see, let's read uh, the introduction, the conclusion, and the first sentence of each paragraph, right? We're not going to read everything, but just to get the idea. So the introduction. Over most of history, most countries have wanted a strong currency, or at least a stable one. In the days of the gold standard and the Bretton Woods system, gold standard means all the currency value is linked to gold. Okay? If we had the British pound and the dollar, we had one British pound was equal to one ounce of gold. Four dollars was equal to one ounce of gold. What was the exchange rate between the dollar and the pound? One. Right, one pound is equal to four dollars. Okay, did that change over time? Yes. In the gold standard? Yes. No. No. Didn't change. Gold standard, this was the, always the same. Okay, paper is linked to gold. Because when people started paper money, they said this has no value, so it has to have some value. So the money would say on the paper, pay one ounce of gold. Okay, so you could go to the bank then with this money, one pound, and the bank would have to give you gold. So the bank had a lot of gold in the bank. The idea of making paper money, one of the ideas, it t it's dangerous and heavy to carry around a lot of gold. Isn't it better to make some paper and then you can take the paper to the bank any time and get gold? Isn't that better than just using gold? Or not? Yes, so they started using paper money, right, in the Middle Ages. Then they used this gold standard. Paper money can be changed for gold, but the currency was all fixed. Okay, so this was the gold standard. Then the Bretton Woods system was, we just made, the US dollar was fixed to gold, every other currency was fixed to the US dollar. Okay, so the point was, you could always get gold for your US dollars. But in the 1970s, the US came off the gold standard. The reason was, people didn't have confidence that the US central bank had enough gold to pay for all the dollars. Because of the Vietnam War, the US needed to spend a lot of dollars, right? So it was a big secret how much gold the US government had. Nobody knew. So countries didn't trust them. They thought that if everybody goes together with their dollars to get gold, there won't be enough gold in the bank. So the US came off the gold standard, right? So nowadays just currencies are linked to the US dollar. The US dollar is not linked to gold price fluctuates in the market. Okay, that was the bread and water systems. So under these two systems, the government made great efforts to maintain exchange rate pegs. So this was a pegged exchange rate system in the world. 
150 years ago. Okay? Every Britain, the US, France, Germany, they all had pegged currencies. Even if the interest rates needed to do so prompted economic downturns. Okay? So only in the exceptional economic circumstances in the 30s and the 70s were those efforts deemed too painful and the pegs abandoned. So the UK again was the first country to leave the peg. Okay? The UK is, these days is talking about leaving the euro. Okay? So you can see that people in the UK are not that worried about their credibility. right? They're more worried about what's good for them. <coughs> if they have to break an agreement or leave something they signed up to, they will do that. Okay? So they did that in the 1930s because in the 1930s we had the Great Depression. The UK was pegged to the US, the same one, right? Very similar to 1992 case. Unemployment in the UK was up to 25%. Okay? They had to raise the interest rates. Okay? So the UK said, why don't we just leave this gold standard and devalue our currency? Can you understand their thinking? They were in the pegged currency with the US, but the UK couldn't compete with the US and Germany at that time. Okay? The US and Germany were exporting more things, and the UK was trapped in this exchange rate. So they decided to leave. Then what happened? What do you think happened after the UK left the gold standard? Did all of the other countries say, that's just the UK, we'll let them leave the gold standard, that's okay, we'll all just stay in the gold standard? Yes, the other countries all copied. France was the next one, right? Then Germany. Why? Because the UK's price was much cheaper. So the UK economy starts doing very well. So this is what people are worried about in the euro area. They're not worried about Greece, because Greece is a very small economy, just 2% of the euro area. But if Greece leaves the euro currency, then Spain is going to say, oh look, Greece is doing very well now, they left the euro currency. So their goods are much cheaper, everybody's going there on holidays, because the hotel is cheaper. Hmm, what should we do? Stay in the euro or leave the euro? Okay, then Italy might say, oh Spain. Everybody's going to Spain on holidays. They're really cheap, right? So Spain has 60 million or 50 million people, Italy has 80 million people. Right, so Italy and Spain is a much bigger problem than Greece. So people is not that worried about Greece, just the after effect, right? So we can see that uh, in this case, even though it caused a big problem, the country stayed in the peg ex 